Get full access to our 10,000 episodes with your paid subscription. My Outdoor TV. Start your free trial today. these decoys put out and get to hunt. My grandpa fought in World War II. He earned his medals wearing navy blue. He fought for freedoms you and I still own. And his son followed his footsteps. He served nine years from Vietnam. He lost a leg his mind and then came home They didn't do it for the colored rivers Can't eat better than this if you don't camp They did it for red, white, and blue The chances that a soldier takes and the sacrifices that he well, that's the measure of a man. That's the measure of a man. I've often said that duck hunters really never die, and although we know they do, you know they're up in heaven looking down on us, still calling Mallard, still working their dog, and the man we're talking about today is Mike Morgan, and I miss Mike so much. Not only did he become a great friend, he became a business mentor. He was a trailblazer, a pioneer of outdoor television, both hunting and fishing hunting across America, fishing across America, Mojo Outdoors, the things that him and Terry Demon accomplished on the camera, their travels, and then I got to travel with both of them, hang out with both of them, sit around a fire with both of them, and share a duck blind with Mike Morgan on more occasions than one. I'm gonna miss it so much. This entire season of The Foul Life is dedicated to Mike Morgan. In today's episode, we're gonna reminisce about some of our hunts with Mike, some of our days spent in camp, and just a lot of that joking around that ribbon. Mike was one of the best at it, practical joker. He'd give it to me and I'd give it right back. Mike Morgan, I miss you, brother. Can't wait to get on one more timber hunt with you soon enough. We took different paths, lived different lives. That's all right, cause it left us here tonight. There's about 400 diver ducks out here. You know, these people, you get these big time duck hunters like Belden, and they don't want to shoot nothing but mallards. But me, old redneck from Mississippi, spoonies, bluebells, ringnecks, hooded magansers. I am a duck killing fool, and I don't care what kind they are. I'm in for any of them. I'm an equal opportunity hunter. So, if we don't get mallards tomorrow, we're coming back and we're getting them divers. Y'all better be watching for me, I'm coming. I'm lost in your eyes, nothing but the moment. The heat of the night, and it's burning with fire. It's yearning with desire, I'm lost in this moment. Well, this is easily the most ducks I've seen since we got here, so. Yeah, might be the hot spot. Them ducks are starting to settle in there now. Beautiful out here, huh, Mike? It is. Absolutely beautiful. Louder than a train, my heart beats. 
Tell me like what your theory on this kind of a hunt is. Do you think that it's because we didn't put the donuts out? No, probably somewhere between the Derculator valve recapitulates the main epicophylogeny, and for some reason that made them not want to land in here today. Come again? <laughs> it's a duck hunting thing, yeah, but it, it does swing over into the goose hunting world too. It does, uh, what does it mean? It means that it's too hot, the ducks aren't here, the geese aren't here, we're wasting time, but what's the difference in wasting time laying out here and wasting time laying at the camp? You know, a guy that I learned to hunt with, his philosophy was the last hour of the last day is as good as the first hour of the first day because them animals don't know when you got here. So, if, yeah. you know, the longer you hunt and don't do any good, it just starts going down. And the last hour of the last day, all you can think about is getting up, packing up, driving home. But if you'll hunt as hard that last hour, opportunities are going to be there good sooner or later. Happen. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this free episode. To continue watching, start your free trial now.